lot of time to work with sex workers, a lot of times to take um, some time for reflection. And I've never been one to struggle with reflecting in class. I've always been a journaler and in school. I've always been like, oh, how hard is it to just write about what you're thinking or feeling or what, I just, what a book I just read or whatever. Um, little did I know that I would enter into an experience that would challenge me so much for such a long time that at the end of it, I would just not have any um, so, I'm going to be honest in this moment and say that I struggled a lot um, to um, take the past 20 months of my life and put it into a 10 minute summary. Um, and I'm sure that a month or a year from now, I'm going to come up with 10, 20 more things that I learned that I couldn't even think about or process yet. Um, for now, I'm going to do the top 10 things um, that I learned as a public ally and as a second year fellow. So the first one is, who is at the table? So this is this idea that we talked about a lot in Public Allies, um, you know, having different opinions, bringing value to the conversation, or having different strengths, bringing value to a project. And before Public Allies, I really would have said, you don't really need everybody's opinion. That person who they got that crazy thought, they're not important in the conversation. Um, they don't help you get anything done. Or if there's a project going on, everyone who wants to be involved, of course they're already involved or someone already told them about it. Um, but now I feel more vigilant in, oh, do we really consider everybody who is, should be at this, having this conversation? Or we really should listen to all the opinions and get everybody's voice in here because no opinion is invaluable. And I've kind of um, put this to work at my partner organization a little bit. Um, we've been going over the content of our website and Sources that we share with um, parents of young children and child care providers. And um, having the conversations with different departments, we kind of found that you can't really alter one aspect of resources that you're sharing without thinking about, okay, so if I'm sharing this with <coughs> child care providers, how does that affect parents? So we've had to bring different departments into the meetings instead of just meeting with the family child care department, we meet with the family child care department with the parent services person there. Um, number two is ask for what you need. If you don't ask, it won't be given. Uh, last year, I became really overwhelmed with some of the things that I had to do in my team service project. Um, towards the end, I had to write a press release, and I had not really done that before. Um, so I found somebody at the organization we were working on, Starfire, who was in charge of doing their press releases, and asked her to you know, give me feedback on mine. And she taught me how to write a press release, and it got published, and that was really exciting. Um, so if I hadn't asked for help, I wouldn't have known how to do that. And uh, this year, we encouraged a lot of feedback in our facilitating our team service project. And we got feedback that um, some people on our team really needed time to process things before we made decisions. So we just restructured our meetings in order to meet those needs. Um, the third thing is that leadership looks different depending on the situation that you're in. And we talk a lot in public allies about everyone leads. And I think that um, that saying is really nice, but it could mean something different in every situation you come across. So I would have situations, especially last year, where I would be told, like, okay, Lord, you need to step back and let other people kind of get the work done and not do everything for everyone. And um, there were other points this year where even though I wanted to step back, I needed to step up and kind of ask the same questions and see, you know, keep everyone on track. And um, another aspect of leadership that I learned this year is asking questions and using that as a method for leadership. Asking the questions that maybe people aren't thinking of. And even if I'm not a leader, of a meeting or a leader of a team, I can still lead by example by asking the questions that maybe people aren't considering. The fourth thing is, that I've learned is being an introvert is a strength. Um, in elementary and high school and middle school, a quiet child is always like the teacher's favorite and they get praised like all the time. It's like, oh, you're so good in class and you're so quiet and all the other kids are crazy and so you're my favorite. And um, so I kind of grew up that way and I stayed that way. And 
in college, that was punished. Like if you, there, you have like a certain percentage of your brain was participating or saying a sentence in class and you wouldn't get those three points every day, you would get a B in the class and that was just, like getting those conflicting messages was really hard for me. And um, when I came into Public Allies, we talked a lot about like people's strengths and how those strengths can be used to get a project accomplished and how you can kind of leverage different people's aspects of their personalities in order to finish a project. And that kind of helped me to realize that, yeah, my strength as an introvert can be used to get things done. You don't need everyone to be an introvert. You don't need everyone to be an extrovert. Um, there are people who can do different aspects of the project that I can't, which is really awesome. The fifth thing is community is what you make it. I used to see community just as where you live, just your like community and neighborhood were synonymous in my brain. Um, and coming into Public Allies, uh, it's kind of shifted to seeing community as little pockets of support systems that I have. Um, I've got the Bible study community, I've got my family community, and um, now I have kind of an idea of how to build up a community. And I'm really struggling in my actual neighborhood where I live to find community because it's in, uh, I live in Over the Rhine, and it's a neighborhood that is just changing rapidly, and it's really hard to make a group support system in the way that I define community for myself. And so I see how to do that now, and so I've got some tools from this experience to go and do that. The sixth thing is trust. Um, I never used to trust that anyone would do anything they said they would do. I was that person who, if I was in a group project, everyone wanted me in their project because I would do it. Like, I would just be like, oh, you don't have time to do that? Let me do it for you, okay? Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> last year, that was something that was really challenged in me. I had to step back and not do all the work because it stressed me out a lot. <laughs> and this year, it was a, like a new branch of trust that I had to learn because I was co-eating a group of people with Lisa here. And, um, I had to trust her with, you know, that she was going to do what she said she was going to do and that we were going to lead the group together in a way that we wanted to lead the group. And, you know, leaning on her was, it was something really powerful for me. It was, um, I learned a lot. It stretched me a lot in a really, in a really good way. This other thing is the platinum rule. So everybody's heard of the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated. And we say in public allies, the platinum rule is treat others the way they want to be treated. So that has informed a lot of the work that I've done in um, my work last year in TSP because we kind of failed to not treat our person the way she wanted to be treated in our project. And, um, and that kind of opened my eyes to this year, again, like kind of thinking like who is not at the table, are we telling people what they need to hear, or are we telling people what, you know, we want them to hear, um, and kind of thinking about that. The eighth thing is communication is something that should never be overlooked in anything where people are involved. Um, Throughout my entire experience this year, the thing that kept me sane was having constant open communication with my co-fellow. Um, without it, we would never have had the balance that we had. Um, and you know, at this I, I, I can say for both of us, hopefully, that neither of us felt overworked or underappreciated because we had such an open relationship. Um, and I think that this spilled over into my work life at my
use that as encouragement to keep going even if I read about how I made a mistake. 